And then I guess the other side over there, that's, yeah, I see the red on the door there. Oh, oh, Yeoman Chambers. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll Pleasure monitor to meet messages you. and help you monitor the crew. And I must say, it's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. The pleasure is mine, Miss Chambers. I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. Oh, so friendly. Sure, you know, we're all friends here. Okay, Kelly. Anything else? Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. Alright, tell me about your job. What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. Oh, good. Then I don't have to run around talking to everybody all the time. She'll just tell me, you know, on deck one, you've got Caden waiting, and he <laughs> he would like to see you in your chambers. Um, chambers. I guess it wouldn't be called chambers. It would be stateroom. Is that all? Isn't that the type of task better suited for a VI? Yes, but being your yeoman is just my official role. Unofficially, I observe the crew. Oh, Everyone working knows for the elusive how risky man. our mission is. Many of us may not be coming back. That's a lot of pressure. I have a degree in psychology. Oh, I'm I see. When people are overly taxed. I thought she was um, a little bit of a spy there, but no, she's a psychologist. You make sure the crew's mental health is sound? Yes. I look for warning signs. I listen. It's not a full-time job, and it's most effective when done informally. Okay. So We're lucky here. to have someone with your skills, Kelly. Thank you, Shepard. What else would you like to know? Um, your opinion of this <laughs> group that we're working this for. This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh, but Cerberus has noble objectives. We look out for human interests. Advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. What about aliens? Because you're... I don't want to say you're being spacist, but you're like borderline there. You're leaving out everybody else. Sounds like Cerberus wants to dominate all aliens and put humankind on top. Cerberus looks out for humanity, but that doesn't mean we hate aliens. Okay, good. My sister started a dog shelter, but she loved cats too. I love humanity. I also love Asari, Quarian, Turian, Salarian, Hanar. That isn't in conflict with Cerberus ideals. All right, you're you're a very loving person. I, li I like her so far. That's a very positive attitude. What can I say? I'm a people person. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Oh, are you happy? Asking the psychologist some psychology over here. How do you feel about being assigned to the Normandy? I was handpicked by the elusive man to help fight the greatest threat known to humanity. How do I feel? Honored, exhilarated, terrified. But mostly I feel encouraged. Under your leadership, we can't fail. As she was saying that, <laughs> it reminded me of that scene in um, in the birdcage. <laughs> oh, whenever whenever the uh, Nathan Lane and um, um, Robin Williams characters are sitting there and they're trying to like pretend to be masculine, and um, or they're trying to teach Nathan Lane's character to be masculine, and it's like they're talking about sports and it's uh, it's like did you see that the game last night or something like that? And how did how did it make you feel? How do you think I feel? <laughs> I can't even think of it. Uh, maybe I'll just include a little clip here or something if I can find it. Well, how do you feel about that call today? I mean, the Dolphins, fourth and three play on their 30-yard line with only 34 seconds to go. How do you think I feel? Betrayed? Bewildered? Don't worry. We'll defeat the Collectors. I trust you implicitly. The moment I met you, I knew I could close my eyes, fall back, and you'd be there. Um, I'd catch you. <laughs> Your trust is well placed, Kelly. I knew it would be. Thank you, Shepard. Anything else you'd like to talk about? Looks like she's a love interest. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Maybe we will. But not like that. Any anyone else? There's no one else here, and we can't go in there. Oh. What's this area of the ship? This is the Combat Information Center. Here, the crew receives sensor data and coordinates gunnery and damage control efforts. While Normandy is flown from the bridge, during combat, the commanding officer issues orders from the CIC. 
Right. Oh, what do we got? We got the cab captain's cabin. I was gonna say the cabin's captain. Captain's cabin. Oh, also, it tells you where people are. Oh, that's really useful. CIC, armory, tech lab, debriefing, cockpit. Jacob, why doesn't it have a uh, Joker there? I mean, I know he's there all the time, but still. Captain's cabin. Shepard's personal cabin. Crew quarters. Mess hall, medical, AI core, main battery, observation deck, life support. Wow, there's a lot going on down there. Engineering. Let's head up to the captain's cabin first off. See what kind of place we get to stay in. Does this look down at anything? No. Oh look, I've got a fish tank too. Although it doesn't look like I have any fish. What's this area of the ship? This is the commanding officer's quarters. It's larger than the quarters of other warships I've served on. This is a Cerberus vessel, not an Alliance warship. Accommodations have been made for personal taste. That said, this space is directly under the exterior pressure hall. The fitting yard workers called it the loft. Oh, very fancy. My own loft. Okay, let's look at this. Medal of Honor view achievements. Are these things that I've already gotten? Oh, I guess those are blacked out because I haven't gotten them yet. Save your crew from an overwhelming attack. Rescue uh, Dr. Kenson. Survive all five waves for Object Row. Complete the arrival. Reminisce with Liara. Liara. So we are going to get Liara. There's a, there are a lot of them here. Personalize your armor. Wow, there are quite a few of them. Oh, is that a picture of Kaden? Can I get real close to it? Oh, look, it actually... Oh man, that's so cool. It actually takes it into consideration who your love interest is, and it puts a picture of them over there. Oh, I'm, I'm liking this game already. They've done some great improvements, and like, it, it's so good. Team status. Check overall status. Oh, we get a lot of them. Look at how many there are. Why is this, why is that uh, not a person? But I can still select it. The veteran, Zaid Masani, combat survival. Uh, Zaid has stopped taking work recently, but he was last seen on Omega. His reputation as the premier bounty hunter in the galaxy has caught up with him, and he is rumored to spend his days drinking and shooting would be rivals. There is none better than better in a fight. The professor, Mar Morden Solis, biological weapons expert, light weapons training with Solarians. Oh, we get a Solarian actually, like, uh, we can take into battle this time. He's a Solarian biological weapons expert whose technology may hold the key to counteracting collector attacks. Currently operating a medical clinic in the slums of Omega. Archangel. Small unit, tactical expertise, omnitool expert, noted sniper. Mercenary commander whose operations are noted for their technical expertise and strategic brilliance. He's responsible for high profile attacks on gang leaders in Omega. So another one on Omega. Okir. Millennia of Com... Millennia? How old is this person? A brilliant, brutal Krogan warlord and Krogan Rebellion's veteran, Okir is obsessed with saving the Krogan from the Genophage. It appears he, he contacted the Collectors to gain the necessary technology. Currently at a Blue Suns camp on Corlos, his, re his relationship with the mercenaries is unknown. The Convict, Jack. Biotic, criminal, currently in custody, rumored to be the most powerful human biotic. Little else is known, but the subject has a history of violence and should be approached carefully. Currently, Jack is being held on the Turian prison ship Purgatory. Cerberus has ne negotiated for the subject's release. Purgatory. More, uh, more religious kind of stuff there. There are probably all these religious, um, references all around that I just wasn't even, like, paying much attention to throughout the first game. Master Thief Kasumi? They're probably going to call her Kasumi or something. Please don't pronounce it like that game, please. <laughs> Sabotage, infiltration, extraction, property acquisition, stealth, agile combat. Subject has stolen extremely valuable resources from servers in the past, alarm systems, DNA encoders, guards, and various other deterrents were bypassed, and we don't know how. Last seen on the Citadel. Oh yeah, the Citadel is still around because I saved it. Okay, and it's just an idea of like what they can do. 
Upgrades? About upgrades. Upgrades improve your squad members' powers, your weapons, and your ship, making mission success more likely. Acquire new upgrades by finding them on missions, purchasing them from stores, or research them using a research terminal. No, no messages, I assume? Oh. Oh, we have a lot of messages, actually. Anderson! Oh, Counselor Anderson! If I hadn't made him the counselor, I wonder if he'd have a different title right here. Or if it would be Udina. Blech. On the off chance that the rumors are true and you actually are alive, I need you to come and talk to me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the last two years. You put me on the council, and it's only fair that you be allowed to speak for yourself about what we've been hearing. Deal struck with Zaid. From elusive man, Shepard, we've reached an agreement with veteran mercenary Zaid Masani. You may know the name. Zaid has been involved in some of the best known and some utterly unknown military operations in the Terminus systems and is feared as a ruthless and relentless bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I arranged to have him join you. You will find him on Omega, where he's wrapping up his current bounty. Don't worry about his fee, I've taken care of that personally. Lost contact with survey ship Project Firewalker. Commander, the MSV Rosalie, a survey ship with Cerberus connections, has gone missing. The survey team was field testing a new prototype, the Hammerhead Planet Side Exploration Rover. In addition, scientists Dr. Manuel Case and Dr. Robert Oloy are aboard the MSV Rosalie and conducting research for us. We need you to find the ship, our survey team, and the doctors. Rosalie was last seen near planet Zayona. Elista is more frontier. Places that I do not know. Normandy crash site! Oh, can we go to the crash site? Commander Shepard from Hackett. Oh, another name that's nice to recognize. Our scans in the Amada, I thought I said Amanda, in the Amada system have turned up something we thought you should see, the final location of the wreckage of the SSV Normandy. We thought this news might be important to you, but we have an ulterior motive. The Alliance would like to honor the Normandy with a monument to be built on the site of the ship's final resting place. We'd like to invite you to place the monument and be the first to walk on the site. There are still 20 crew members unaccounted for from the attack on the Normandy. If you find any signs of these lost crewmen, we ask that you report to the Alliance so that these heroes' families might find some closure. Godspeed to you, Commander. Nice that they're just assuming that I'm alive. I mean, Anderson is like, I heard rumors. And Hack is just like, yeah, okay, it's true, he's alive, whatever. Lucid Man, Shepard, our armor technicians heard you were back in action and insisted that you should be appropriately equipped. They put together a package that I had delivered to the Normandy. You'll find it in your personal quarters. Fortunately, we know your size. Well, yeah, you spent two years rebuilding my body. You should know my size by now. You can change it if you had wanted. Love Dragon. Jacob tells me you've been keeping an eye out for cutting edge supplies, weapons, armor, amps, and so forth. It so happens that I had something waiting for you when you awoke in the Lazarus research station. It was lost in the chaos, but found again when Cerberus secured the station. I had it delivered to the Normandy. Look in the armor closet in your quarters. It's, it'll be hard to miss. Yeah, and I, I asked about this uh, last time. I don't remember which video, so it might not have gone out yet. But um, there were a bunch of like add-on packs with various armors, and I don't know if they're very cheaty, if I should install them or not, because I don't want to go and download like the the super mega ultra Im imperial uh, warrior armor or whatever it might be that has like plus 200 percent health and like 500 extra weapon damage or something i want stuff that's just maybe it'll give me a little bonus at most or it'll be kind of fine-tuned for certain situations so let me know if that's something that i should install i guess i could i could just install them and not wear them if they are kind of cheaty like that Overlord. One of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Project Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology, and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely compartmentalized, enough that I can't divulge operational details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet Ita. Ita? I assume that's how you say that? Typhon system in the... F Ita, that's the, um... Etruscan goddess of death, I think. And I forget what Typhon is. But I'm sure that has some significance, too. Um, in the Phoenix Massing Cluster, please use care in this matter. Arc Projector. We recently had an incident involving the Geth at one of our outposts on the Scillian Verge. Don't worry, I'm not sending you off to chase anything down. Our operatives waged a highly successful battle against a Geth scouting party and credited their success to a new advanced electrical attack device that we finally let them take out of the lab. Since their unit is being reassigned for some rest and relaxation, I thought you should take custody of the weapon in the meantime. 
that was the one that I saw over there by the, um, it was in the same category as my other, uh, the grenade launcher. It's the arc projector. I sent it to the Normandy's armory so you can examine it for yourself and use it if you deem it worthy. It's gone through plenty of tests that indicated overloads kinetic barriers and synthetic enemies particularly well, but laboratory demonstrations are a poor substitute for actual field reports. We know it works. Now we want to see what it can do in the right hands. If all goes well, we'll use your tactics to train other operatives. I should actually try it out. Oh, so I actually have to mark them as red. That way I can go through and be like, oh, I still need to do this, do I need to do that? So that one has been delivered, so I can mark that as red. God, look, and it puts more stuff. Is there, can I? No, there's no up or down right here. It's just I need to get rid of these before I can get the next thing. Shepard, at great cost and effort, we have tracked down the master thief Kasumi Goto and convinced her to work with you. Very few people have ever heard of her, and fewer can claim to have seen her in person. She is unequaled in stealth and infiltration, and her skills will prove invaluable in your mission. Travel to the Zakara world on the Citadel. Oh, the Zakara ward. Ward. The <laughs> there you will find a special ad terminal that differs from the usual. Input the password silence is golden to begin the rendezvous. Man, watch a training video on tactical usage, powers, real time control. So that's just tutorial stuff. I mean, it's still nice. Yeah, you and me both, Shepard. Oh, armor. <laughs> I mean, this is the same thing as before, but still, if I want to change something, I can just do it right here. And I wish I could actually use the WASD to switch and not have to grab the little little slider. I do like that armor. God, what happened to Shepard's butt? Didn't he have a butt to begin with? See, he's got he's got a little bit there, and then suddenly he puts this armor on and it flattens out. What is that? That is no good. It's like squeezing his butt, just flattening it right out. Oh, we got some music and everything. A fancy little reading chair. Uh, whatever kind of boring reading that is. Some kind of technical manual or something. All right, let's let's see about uh, going to the next location. Who's quarters? Oh, and it even shows you, like, a diagram of where you're going in the ship. That's pretty cool. So much bigger. There's so much... Oh, look, the little table where everyone sit and not talk to me. Hello? You guys want to say anything? Chef surprise again. Come on, Rupert. I'm sorry, princess. Filet mignon and caviar coming right up. Let me just get out my doilies. That'd be real nice, Mr. Gardner. Oh, I can't talk to you, but he does have a name. That was that's actually pretty cool. Mess Sergeant Gardner. Commander Shepard, the hero of the Citadel. You did humanity proud that day. Mess Sergeant Rupert Gardner here. How can I be a service? Who is his voice actor? I recognize that voice. Again. They're there are a lot of really recognizable people who voice in these games. Do you need anything? You have everything you need. I make do, but have you ever tried to prepare a decent meal with military provisions? I'm good, but I'm no miracle worker. Taking down the collectors is going to be rough business. The crew deserves a few fine meals before they throw themselves into the fire. Well, what can I do for you? You need some kind of like fancy alien meat? What do you need? If I had some quality ingredients... Oh, shit. You've got more to worry about than grocery shopping on the Citadel. Forget I mentioned it. Don't worry about it. We're all in this together. No one... You know... No one is too big to... Big for... No one's too big for their britches or... I don't know what I'm trying to say. If I head that way, I'll keep an eye out. Much appreciated. 
Most of this list is probably standard fare for those Namby Pambies on the Citadel. <laughs> Anything else you'd like to talk about? I like this guy already. What do you do here on the Normandy? What don't I do? Most think of me as the ship's cook, but I'm also the facilities technician and custodian. HVAC, plumbing, non-mission critical electrical, I make sure they're all clean and running. Janitor and cook? So the man cleaning the toilets is also preparing the meals. <laughs> I wash my hands. Most of the time. <laughs> this ain't no luxury liner. You have to pull your own weight in a Cerberus vessel, and I catch what falls through the cracks. <laughs> through the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> I do like him a lot. And, you know, very thankless kinds of jobs, so... You know, all though very necessary. How do you feel about working for Cerberus? Damn proud. Cerberus gets the job done. The Alliance and Council have got their heads buried so deep up their butt puckers they can't see <laughs> squat. It'll take good <laughs> old human ingenuity to crush these collector vermin. Only Cerberus knows that. How did you find your way into Cerberus? Can you believe I was once a family man, working the well. Ezo rigs along the frontier? I was happy enough, but losing everything to Batarian raiders can change your outlook. I needed to make a difference. I'm no soldier, but I've got skills, and Cerberus keeps an eye out for talent. I'll do whatever it takes to help. Be that plumbing a sewer, routing an air duct, or keeping everyone's bellies full. All right, you know, I'll, I like you, Mr. Gardner. I won't take any more of your time. Back to work. <laughs> I guess not miss Mr. Gardner. I should call him Sergeant, because he is a sergeant. Main battery. Oh, that's off limits for me, the isn't it? The officer is required to access the gunnery control station. Oh, I gotta get all these people to get upgrades for my ship. Well, the medical lab's still in the same place. That's nice. What's this area of the ship? The sick bay. It is equipped to provide short-term emergency care. In the event of critical injury, personnel must be transferred to a fully equipped medical facility. Look, there's a little water, uh, water cooler there. What are these little things? Ah, <gasps> Dr. Chakwas! Commander Shepard. I watched the Normandy crumble with you on board. It's good to see you alive. You too, you old broad. I'm shocked. You're serving on a Cerberus vessel now? Surprising. Even to me. Yet, here I am. The kind of trauma you endured would have changed most people. But not you, I see. Welcome back, Shepard. Doctor, you've been with the Alliance for years. Why leave now? After the Normandy was lost, the surviving crew was reassigned. I was stationed at the Mars Naval Medical Center, a very respectable position, but it wasn't on a starship. <laughs> you needed to fly, huh? Colonial military life isn't for you? I've spent most of my life on warships, never knowing what the next mission might bring. I'm used to the hum of engines, the creaking of bulkheads, that subtle vertigo when the momentum dampeners kick in. Life planet side is just too static, too boring. No sure duty for this lady. You're not the Cerberus type, Doctor. I don't work for Cerberus. I work for you. On a mission that may be crucial to the survival of the human race. I have faith that your dealings with Cerberus will be ethical. I trust you, Commander. Oh, thank you, Doctor. There's a very good chance this mission will be a one-way trip. Are you prepared for that? I've been through the reclaiming of Shanxi, the Skillian Blitz. We survived the Battle of the Citadel and the destruction of the Normandy together. I've lived a full life. No regrets. I'd like to make sure the crew gets the same opportunity. Good to have you, Doctor. You have everything you need. I believe so. This medical bay seems very much like the sick bay on the original Normandy. Only thing missing are my private reserves. I even had a bottle of Ceres Ice Brandy that I was saving for a special occasion. Oh, well, we're gonna do that. We're gonna find you one. I'll keep an eye out for a replacement bottle. Oh, you needn't. 
It's expensive, and we have much larger concerns ahead. Don't worry about it. You know, sometimes you gotta have a, a little fun. You can't just be all work, work, work. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. Oh good, it did give me a quest. I was gonna say, will it actually give me a quest, or was that just kinda like some idle chatter? Is there anything else I might want to look at in here? Access to the AI core is restricted. I knew it, I'm gonna have to go in there eventually, like re-kajigger her. God, that... This... This was Caden's spot. Oh, where's he gonna be? Oh, he better be able to be brought back on... Uh, on my team, and he's not like some NPC on like a... weird backwater planet or something. Commander, what can I do for you? Do you have a minute, Miranda? No doubt you've got a lot of questions. Cerberus isn't as evil as most people believe. If I can help allay any of your concerns, I'd be happy to do so. So, what would you like to know? I know what we're doing here, but what's Cerberus's long-term goal? The advancement of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. The Salarians have the Special Tasks Group. The Asari have their legendary commandos for stealth and recon operations. Cerberus is humanity's answer to those organizations. And I assume elusive man is going to be the answer to this. But those organizations are regulated by governments. Who keeps Cerberus in check? Nobody. We're privately funded and our backers Ugh. trust the elusive man to make the right decisions. But he's Private very funding. clear about our goals. Protect humanity and serve its advancement. Feeling a little, uh, corporation-y up in here. Private funding. Are you military or political? Or both? Cerberus has several divisions. Political, military, scientific, but we're all working towards the same goal. The teams you encountered before your accident were mostly part of our military division. But not all Cerberus operations use the same protocols. We try not to get bogged down in bureaucracy or formality. And they all operate somewhat independently, I guess, but at the same time, they answer to the elusive man. I don't, I don't know. What kind of resources does Cerberus have? Unlimited. We're very well funded, though I doubt anyone other than the elusive man knows exactly how well. But our resources aren't unlimited. Reviving oh, okay. you and rebuilding the Normandy was a significant investment. And a significant risk. We're all hoping you can do the impossible, Shepard. No pressure. I did it once. Tell me about this what guy. What can you tell me about the elusive man? Not much that you don't already know. Even I don't have access to most of his background. And you've seen more of him than most ever do. It's rare for him to become directly involved in missions, but you're something special. Whatever else people might say about him, I can assure you he's got humanity's best interests at heart. That includes you and me. Are you sure? I don't know. I'm still kind of wary about this man. How can you be sure of that if you know so little about him? I didn't get to where I am without knowing how to gauge people's motives and ambitions, even from brief encounters. He's no saint, and he'd be the first to admit it. But he is committed. Humanity couldn't have a better advocate. And, and having, like, having his eyes on a specific goal and, you know, running towards that full speed and ignoring everything else can lead him eventually to possibly make some bad decisions that I may not agree with that may have us, uh, splitting off from each other. Tell me about yourself, Miranda. Well, I guess that's fair. I've spent the last two years learning everything there is to know about you. Well, you should probably know that I've had extensive genetic modification. Not my decision, but I make the most of it. It's one of the reasons the elusive man handpicked me. I'm very good at just about anything I choose to do. She's pretty cocky, yeah. You certainly don't lack for confidence. It's just a fact. My reflexes, my strength, even my looks, they're all designed to give me an edge. No point in hiding from it. It's the reason I'm trusted to oversee the most dangerous, risky, and technically demanding operations Cerberus undertakes. And it's why I was assigned to you. It's my job to make sure you succeed, Shepard. So, whoever designed you, did they pick those teeth? What level of genetic modification are we talking about? That's very thorough. Physically, I'm superior in many ways. I heal quickly and I'll likely live half again as long as the average human. My biotic abilities are also very advanced. For a human. Add to that some of the best training and education money can buy, and... Well, it's pretty impressive, really. <laughs> wow. 
really just into herself. Sounds like you were designed to be perfect. Maybe, but I'm not. I'm still human, Shepard. I make mistakes like everyone else. And when I do, the consequences are severe. Everyone expects a lot from someone with my... abilities. Yeah, I, I mean, of course there would be downsides to being designed to be as near to perfect as possible. Everyone's gonna expect you to be perfect. Thanks for the information, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Whatever you need. So is this like her stateroom right here? It's a lot smaller. Still more of a ship to explore. This place is huge. Oh, that's the elevator. Life support and... The men's restroom. Well, let's take a look in here. Well, three open bay showers. Jacob. The observation deck is closed until needed. Access to life support is restricted. Mm hmm. Man, mm -hmm. yeah, that shouldn't be allowed. I shouldn't get to look inside there. That's the, the ladies' room. The observation deck is closed until needed. Will I eventually be able to go in there just whenever, or is it going to be specific instances when I can go in there? Because I want to look out and see this, the, um, just, I wanted to see the, the sky, but it's space. I want to see the space. Oh, she's a cutie. How old? Ah, uh, she'll be a year old next month. Oh, you'll miss her first birthday. Wow, well, my family lives in New Canton. Oh, uh, that colony's on the edge of the frontier. Could be vulnerable to collector attack, couldn't it? Exactly. It's most important that she have a first birthday. That's why I'm here. Hello, crew. Well, at least the beds are only stacked too high. When I was in the Navy, they were three high, so, you know, at least they've got a little bit more space. And such a nice view. Isn't there another door? No, that was life support there. Okay. Excuse you! Oh, I thought I had more loading time. I was taking a drink. Monitoring station. Oh. Didn't really do anything there. Giddy! What's this area of the ship? Normandy's cargo deck. It includes facilities to rearm and repair Normandy's embarked ground vehicle and shuttle. My last ship didn't need a shuttle. Why do we have one? This ship is nearly twice the mass of the previous Normandy. It is more difficult to land the ship on high gravity worlds. Do I have a Mako Mark II? God, there's so many places to go! It just keeps going! Jeez. I feel like this probably is not a safe place to stand, but I mean, I guess it must be if they'll. Uh, they've got like a terminal right there. Engineer Donnelly. You came all the way down here to see us? You're speaking to our commanding officer. <laughs> uh, like his accent. I'm touring the ship, getting to know my crew. I'm Engineer Ken Donnelly, handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's Engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? Oh, well, just getting to know you guys. Tell me all about yourselves. Where did you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance, serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw Sovereign firsthand. You left. Why did you leave the Perugia? After you died, Anderson lost political clout. The council backslid on the Reaper menace. Now, of course they, they did. They sovereign Ugh. as an isolated threat, as a single... Which was bullshit. They said your warnings of a greater danger were mistaken or delusional. We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seemed to be doing that. Uh, fucking council. Every goddamn time. I should have just let them die last time. How did you wind up with Cerberus, Ken? 
Once you were gone, the Alliance brass descended like vultures, tearing apart everything you'd said. I was very public with my defense for you. I didn't hold back. That's an understatement. If Kenneth wasn't such a talented engineer, they'd have court-martialed him for insubordination. But it got me noticed by the elusive man. He made an offer, and here I am. Gabby. So why did you join, Gabby? Kenneth and I have been partners in crime since we graduated from Tech Academy. When he got the Cerberus offer, I insisted that it include me. He'd fall apart without me. Thanks, Mum. Also, I <laughs> love engines, and the Normandy is state of the art. When I got the opportunity to work on her, I had to jump. I like these two a lot already. What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the collectors right in their daddy bags. That's enough <laughs> for me. <laughs> the daddy bags. Can I get you guys anything? I, I'm gonna go make a, a trip to the Citadel, you know, pick up a, a bit of groceries, some uh, some brandy for Dr. Chakwas. Is set up okay down here? You need a snack? I can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. Kenneth, you're complaining. Tell me what's going on. What kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there's an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field bleed. Kenneth, you're boring the commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. So with all the resources these people have, why don't they have those for you? Why isn't something like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected, it's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. I see. Carry on. Well do, Commander. Right, another thing to add to I'm the shopping list. Came down. I told you he would. <laughs> There's more! They aren't kidding about this being double the mass. Or more. Okay, anyone down here? Someone's just got a little cot. Someone asleep down here? I'm probably gonna get someone on board eventually who's just gonna spend all their time down there. That's the cargo, that is the elevator. Goes back to engineering. That was the way I took down and port cargo. Oh, I can't go down to this area anymore, can I? Because that used to be where everybody hung out down in like the the hangar. I'm just pressing the wrong button. Okay, let's go back up to CIC. It is time to save. Commander, oh. you've received a new message at your private terminal. Really? I mean, thank you, but it's time to save. I... That, that exploration of the ship took a little bit longer than I expected it to. It's a, a lot bigger, which is also really cool. Okay, I'm saving, and I'm going to go get lunch. So thank you for joining me, as always. Stay safe out there, everybody. See you next time.